Paul Kayonga's children were born normal, but as soon as they clocked six years and onwards, the changes began. It all started with his first child, Richard. He suspected polio and thought that perhaps he hadn't been attended to by a qualified doctor. Paul took him to Mulago National Referral Hospital, and after six months of checkups, the medical personnel told him they couldn't find anything wrong. But gradually, the boy deteriorated. <laughs> The next child, Gerald, Richard's follower, presented similar symptoms. He later got worse and the school asked the parents to keep the boys home since they couldn't cope in a normal school environment. Paul and his wife then took to looking after these young adults whose handicap meant they were cared for like babies. Paka, Shortly after Richard died, aged 25, Gerald passed on at the age of 24. When Julius, his fourth born, turned eight, the same pattern manifested. The once healthy, bubbly boy began to lose his strength. About five years ago, Paul Kayonga's wife, apparently tired, packed her bags and left. He now cares for his three sons on his own. According to doctors, Paul's former wife carries the gene, and any other male child she might have will most likely have the same condition. It's an X recessive gene, that's how it's carried. So these conditions are seen in boys because the boys have one X. So one abnormal X definitely shows that you're going to have that presentation. But if you have one abnormal X and a one normal X, it won't be seen, which is girls have two Xs, boys have one X and one Y. These cases are so rare that not much attention has been given to the condition, but research is underway, and an online search shows that so far, gene therapy tested on dogs has been successful, paving the way for human clinical trials. In the meantime, the boys are struggling, barely surviving. They have difficulty getting up from a sitting position. Someone needs to hold on to something, then as they are getting up, they use the, the legs to support themselves and then stretch up the body and then eventually walk. So that's the first stage, usually seen at five years. Then at around eight, they have an equinus. The feet, they walk, but um, the heel does not touch the ground. Then the, they have a pseudo hypertrophy of the calf muscles. The muscle is big, not because they are so strong, but it's fat and some little muscle. Then eventually they become wheelchair bound because they can't go about. Kayonga has a 21 year old daughter who is normal, but his three boys, aged 15, 12, and 8, are already showing Goa's sign at different stages. The disease can be fatal. It starts with the skeletal muscles. So we're talking about muscles that help you move your legs, your hands. But it progresses, it affects the muscles responsible for breathing, the diaphragm specifically. So they have difficulty breathing, which becomes worse at night. And they usually die due to respiratory failure. A fellow resident of Paul's village, Seganga, in Goero in Wakiso district, suggested he tries out Kosu Hospital and he brought his eldest son. The day we visited, the three boys were to have a biopsy done on each of them to determine what kind of muscle dystrophy they had. There are two conditions. If you have, like, the, there is the milder form, which is the Becker's, then the more severe form, which is the Dushni muscle dystrophy. So, there is one, the milder form, we do some physiotherapy to increase muscle power. They can do that. Then for the other one, yes, we do some physiotherapy, but 
we know the cost, it's a poor prognosis. So we usually try to prolong the process, do some exercises, then we provide wheelchairs. Some need respiratory support, oxygen maybe at night, then we need to treat all infections so they can live as long as they can. In two weeks, Paul Kayonga will know what exactly has plagued his family that he has not had answers for for over 18 years. Josephine Karunji, NTV. <laughs>